Okay, today is November 21st, 2011. We're on lesson 5.1. We've completely changed now. We're working with trig. So we have three major formulas over here. Okay? We have our sine theta. Theta means the angle is equal to the opposite side of a triangle divided by the hypotenuse of the triangle. Okay? Cosine theta, which is the angle, is equal to the adjacent side of a triangle divided by the hypotenuse. And tangent theta, which is the angle, is equal to the opposite side of a triangle divided by the adjacent. It represents the angle. For theta, you can always use x. Theta just represents angles. You can always use x to represent it. So what we're going to do here... Now, what's very important about these three trig ratios is they only work with right angle triangles. So your triangle must be a right angle triangle in order for this to work. So we have our ratios over there, okay? And I'm going to put some numbers on here. We're going to have uh, 2, 3, and 5, let's say, okay, as our triangle. In fact, I don't know if that works. What we'll do is we're going to name them by letters. So it's important that the side of a triangle you name, because we're going to need to know this later, your angle A, this would be opposite, or this would be side A. Angle B, this would be side B. And angle C, this would be side C. Now, Pythagorean theorem comes in handy also with these triangles. We'll put it up in our formula sheet in a second. What's important is setting up this triangle. For instance, let's say, and I've named this triangle now. We're going to duplicate it. Say we have our second triangle here. And I'm trying to find angle X. Okay? If I'm trying to find angle X... There are three different ratios I can use. I can use sine, cosine, or tangent to solve this. Okay? So if I'm trying to find angle X and I want to use sine, what we'll do is we move this over. Sine X, X is our angle, is equal to this will be our opposite side. Okay, so we're going to call that side A is equal to A divided by the hypotenuse is going to be the longest side of the triangle. It's always opposite of the right angle, so it's A divided by side C. We'll do it in red just for, uh, we're doing sine in red, let's say. If we were trying to find angle X using cosine, I'd be looking for the adjacent angle. This is the adjacent angle, which is B. Okay? So this is B divided by, again, we're looking at our C again, divided by side C of the triangle. Yeah. Finally, if we're trying to find tangent X, tangent would be the opposite side, which is our A. Uh, oh, let's do that in green. That is A opposite over adjacent, which is side B. So we've named our triangle and set this up for angle X specifically. Okay. Now what's important is we do need to recognize, and we'll do a small triangle up here. Say this was the same triangle, and this is our angle X. It's important to realize that this is the opposite side of that angle. This is the adjacent side. And this is the hypotenuse. Okay? So we have our three sides of the triangle. The hypotenuse is always the opposite of the right angle. 
Depending where the angle is, that completely changes our opposite and adjacent. Our opposite and adjacent. Okay, we're going to set up two more triangles. Same idea. This time we're looking for this as angle X. Okay? Since that is our angle X, this side of the triangle now becomes our opposite side. Okay? This now becomes the adjacent. And our hypotenuse stays the exact same. means the side or touching adjacent, okay? Now, I want you guys to relate this. I'm actually going to use the exact same sides of the triangle. I'm still going to name it the same, but I want, to, I want you to see how the ratios come out differently. So, we're now finding a different angle in the triangle. When I set up sine ratio of that angle, specifically, I'm trying to find sine x, okay? So I'm trying to find that angle x. I'm now with b divided by c. When I'm looking for cosine x, I'm now looking at a divided by c. And finally, when we're looking for tangent x, we're looking for b divided by a. This is what's very important here. Important. So if you guys notice, as long as I have the measurements of these sides, side a, b, or c, I can use any formula to find my angle x in both examples. But I want you to look, depending on what angle in the triangle I was using, look how our ratio changed. When I was looking for this angle up here, the one on top, Sine x was equal to a divided by c. We're using the same triangle, a, b, c. Down here, when I was looking for the other angle, it was equal to b divided by c. So the sine ratio still stays the same, but depending on what angle we're looking for, our opposites and adjacent switch. It depends on what angle we're working with. Same thing happened with cosine x. Cosine was adjacent divided by hypotenuse. Well, the adjacent side here was b, and the hypotenuse was c. When it's this angle, the adjacent side was A, and the hypotenuse was C. So we had A divided by C compared to where we had B divided by C before. This all changes depending on what angle we're looking for. And again, same idea with tangent. A divided by B then becomes B divided by A. So it's very important when you put a triangle out, draw a diagram. Put the angle in the triangle that we're working with and then label it opposite and adjacent. Don't just instantly label something opposite and adjacent because we depends on what angle we're depends on what angle we're. All right. So again, uh, we got a question here. It says Eric's car alarm will sound if his car is disturbed, but it's designed to shut off if his car is being towed at an angle of elevation that is more than 15 degrees. So, angle of elevation. So let's say we have the car. Let me draw a picture of our car here. Here's Eric's car. Futuristic. I don't know why I made that design. Well, there's his car. There's his car. So here's his car. Eric's car is designed, if it's disturbed, the alarm will go off. But if it's elevated at an angle of 15 degrees, it'll turn right off, okay? So, we're gonna assume, oh, it's moving kind of slow. We're about to get to it. So, we have this car here. The angle of elevation is gonna be this angle down here. This will be the angle the car is elevated at when it's being towed, some kind of thing towing it here, okay? So we're going to be looking for this angle. They've also told us that uh, Mike's tow truck can lift a bumper no more than 0 0.88 meters high. So we know the highest this car can get pulled up is 0 0.88 meters. That's the highest it'll go. And
process. We're going to assume that the car is being balanced on its back wheel. Okay, so I know it's not drawn perfectly. The distance from the back wheel's axle to the front of the car is 3.8. Okay? Oh, sorry, 3.6. Six meters. So what we just discovered is from where it's leaning to the tip of this car, so from the back wheel's axle to the front bumper is 3.6 meters. The height it gets off the ground is 0 0.88. We need to find the angle of elevation here. So this is all the information they've given us. What we're going to do here is we need to determine what we're going to use. This is our angle. So what that means is we have the measurement of what side? That is our opposite side. And what other side of the triangle do we have a measure of? Hypotenuse. So because I have hypotenuse and the opposite, which of these three are we going to be using? That's right. We're going to use our sine ratio because it's opposite over hypotenuse. So we're going to take our sine ratio here. And we're going to plug our values in. Now theta will be our x. Okay? So sine x is equal to the opposite side is 0 0.88 and the adjacent side is 3.6. So on our calculator we get 0.88 divided by 3.6 is equal to 0 0.244 let's say is equal to sine x. Now yes, what's very important we're trying to isolate just x. So in other words, I have to move sine to the other side of the equation. When sine comes over to the other side of the equation, it becomes the inverse of sine. So we get x is equal to sine inverse, which is to the power of negative 1, of 0 0.24444. In my calculator, it's really easy to put in. I just have to push shift. Oh, jeez. And I push sine negative 1, 14.41. So, so, the angle, the highest angle of elevation that uh, Mike's tow truck can lift this car is at 14.1 degrees. What will happen to this, uh, who, Eric's car if it's not lifted above 15 degrees? The alarm is going to stay on, so this isn't going to work for Eric. But there is something else we can use to figure this out. I'm going to show you example two now. So we know that towing it from the front bumper to the back wheel won't work. Okay, example two. So we know from Eric's car from the back wheel to the front bumper was 3.6 meters. We just discovered that. And we discovered that that won't work for our towing purposes. But... There's another way you could tow a car. We could tow this car from the back wheel, or sorry, from the front wheel to the back bumper. The distance of that apparently is going to be 2.8. So this is our second option. This distance will be 2.8. So in other words, this car is going to be towed like this. It's going to be on its front wheel and tipped back. Okay? So again, we're going to make an angle of elevation out of this. Uh, I know the bumper seems to be going farther. Let's fix that part of the car here. It'll be leaned on the front wheel. We're towing the car from the back now. Okay? So what that means is from this back wheel to here, and up and across. So we know again that with this tow truck, the highest the tow truck can lift the car is 0 0.88 meters off the ground. So we're going to say here's the towing part now. We're going to be looking for this angle, which should be our angle of elevation. And we do know that this distance from here to here 
is only 2.8 meters. Okay? This will be 2.8 meters. What ratio are we going to be using again to solve this? Sine. Again, our measurements, we have the opposite side and the hypotenuse. So we're going to be using our sine ratio once again to solve this. This time we'll be plugging in different numbers. So for our sine ratio, we're going to replace theta with x. So we have sine x is equal to the opposite side is 0 0.88 divided by 2.8. So we get 0.88 divided by 2.8. 0 0.314. But again, we're isolating x, so we need to bring sine to the other side of the equation. When I bring sine over, it'll become inverted. x is equal to sine inverse 0 0.314, which will equal 18.3. So apparently, in order for Eric to get his truck towed, he'll actually have to tow the truck from the back so that the alarm doesn't go off. If he tows the truck from the front, the alarm will go off the entire way and annoy everybody. Okay, example three. We have a guy in a hot air balloon. Okay? We have a guy, he's in a hot air balloon. We're going to call him Austin. Austin's in a hot air balloon. And he's discovered that the hot air balloon is tied to the ground right now. Okay. So here's our ground. The hot air balloon's been tied, but there is a wind. And the wind is blowing the hot air balloon. Austin needs to figure out the angle of depression to where he originally started with the hot air balloon. So an angle of depression will be a horizontal line from where he is down. Austin estimates that the angle of depression is 55 degrees. Okay? He also knows that he's 95 meters, the rope is 95 meters long. He wants to figure out how high in the air he is right now. So he's looking for his height. Okay. So the rope is 95 meters long. He estimates the angle of depression is 55 degrees. He wants to know how high into the air he's floating above the ground right now. Ground right now. So. Now I've drawn a triangle. It looks like it's a bit counterintuitive. I'm sure most people would draw a triangle like this. But the problem with this is we've estimated an angle of depression. Okay? An angle of depression is always written from where you are horizontally and then downwards. Just like an angle of elevation with the car question was horizontal and then upwards. Angle of depression is like that. If I were to make the triangle the other way, this would not be a proper angle of depression. Angles of de depression and elevation are always measured off of horizontal lines. Okay, so we're going to use the bolded triangle, and we want to figure out the height of this triangle. So now, essentially, according to this angle, I have the hypotenuse, and I'm looking for the height of where we are right now. So what formula will I be using once again? We're going to be looking for sine again because we are looking for the opposite this time. We're looking for the opposite and we have the measure of the angle and the hypotenuse. So we're going to be left with sine. This time the angle is 55. So I replace theta with 55 is equal to, we're looking for the height, that's our opposite. So we'll call that h divided by 95. I need to isolate h. 
So I'm going to bring 95 to the other side of the equation, and it becomes multiplied by sine 55 is equal to h. So we're going to get sine 55 times 95 is 77.8. So it turns out that he's floating 77.8 meters above the ground. Now, let's say Austin also wants to find out how far from where the balloon started or its pinnacle it is. We want to find how far he shifted to the left. Okay? Now, there are two ways we could solve this. The first way is that would be considered the adjacent side of the triangle. And if we have the adjacent and the hypotenuse, we'd be then be using our cosine formula. Okay? So I could solve this question using cosine. We would have cos 55 is equal to, we're looking for the adjacent side now, divided by the hypotenuse is still 95 meters. Becomes the same idea, 95 times cos 55 equals A. And it turns out 55 cos times 95 is 54.4. Two is good. It matters. 54.4. Four nine, we'll say. So, we know that Austin is floating 77.8 meters above the ground, and he has shifted 54 point, eh, we can round it to 5 meters, to the left. Now, there was another way I could have solved for that x once I had the height. Does anyone know, once I had this measurement here, and this measurement here, how I could have solved using just the measurements? So, Raiden pointed out that we could have used Pythagorean's theorem. I know I don't have it in our formulas, but we learned it a while ago. A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Once we had this height and the hypotenuse, we could have solved for the drifting question without using a trig ratio. We could have plugged 77.8 for A. Now, 95. Does that represent the B or the C in the equation? The C. It's the hypotenuse. C always has to be the hypotenuse. So we have 95 squared plus B squared. Okay. I need B to be by itself, so we'd have B squared is equal to 95 squared. Subtract 77.8 squared. I'm going to do that all in one step here. Uh, 95 squared. Subtract 77.8 squared equals, yeah, we have 2,972.16. And in order to get B by itself, I need to square root both sides. So when I square root this side, 54.5. So I could have solved that question using Pythagorean's theorem also. If you find the ratios easier because we're getting used to them, that's fine. You can use the ratios also.